Yeah, yeah we didn't know anything about what was dangerous, what wasn't, what to touch, what not to touch. We didn't know what we were loading. Uh, basically, every morning we had a mission to meet with them at 06 at the front gate, and we went out and picked up stuff. And We've, we told these people that were in charge of this ammo storage place, you know, hey, this stuff might cook off all these days. And um, unfortunately, one day it did cook off. That was insane. <laughs> that was insane. I mean, it was almost like a comedy that was real scary at the same time. Because uh, there was rocket motors in there, all kinds of RPGs, thousands of artillery rounds, and they're just cooking off, going every which way. And I could hear boom, 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 boom. And I'm thinking, you know, well, I knew, I knew exactly what it was. But then I thought, oh my God, because we had a uh, part of our, the 459th was on a haul mission that day. And they usually came in about that time. So I got a little bit worried and concerned at that point in time because I said, so I went up and there was somebody there that was like a, an MP to where you couldn't go any further. And I said, did the unit that was unloading the ammunition get out? They said, yeah, they got out about 30, 40 minutes ago. So we grabbed everybody, put your, you know, put everybody put their Kevlar's on and, and their flak vests on, and we had a ditch on the a trench that we had put in on the far, the back side of our, our area that we were at. So we had everybody kind of hunker down in there till we kind of figured out what we were supposed to do or what we needed to do. Uh, what we need, ended up doing is everybody jumping in the vehicles and, and getting out of that area uh, because there was a fear they had a couple large, large rockets up there that would take out a grid square, and we were concerned that if one of those go off, we're within the grid square. Um, so we ended up spending the night over at the, uh, over at the base's uh, headquarters, uh, sleeping, on the, sleeping in the Humvees and, and on, the, on the sidewalk that night as the, and kind of watching the firework display from afar. Bartlett House Hustler. <laughs> Your ups are going. But in yeah. all honesty, if you really look at it, the reserves, we brought so much more to the table yeah. as far as the Army's concerned than most Army units out there. Because a lot of the kids that are in the Army, they, they're go, they go straight from mom and dad's totally house enough. to the Army. We, you know, we survive yeah. out in the real world. You know, we have carpenters, electricians, plumbers. School teachers, social workers. And, it, so, and also, we're very proficient at our actual job. Yeah. But where we are unable to maintain is on our downtime. And that's what <laughs> always got us in trouble. So Sergeant Craig, he'd go out on these beer runs. He comes back the first time, he says, uh, he has a case of beer. It's like, I bought it off a man named Yosser. He's like, out here, standing, you know, barefoot. You know, ragged clothes, but he has a case of beer, and we buy it off of him. Well, every you know, a couple weeks, something like that, they go out, get a case of beer for the guys to share, something like that. Well, every time they went back, Yosser was, not only was selling to us, he was selling to everybody on that post. Well, every time they went back, clothes were improving, he had shoes, everything like that. And uh, so the story, this is a funny story, Three months into the deal, when Sergeant Craig goes out there, Yosser's driving a yellow, like, 77 Mercedes. <laughs> and the back, the back seat and the trunk's just full of beer. <laughs> Selling it to American soldiers over there, so. And then uh, he realized what the, Amer the value of the American dollar. I can remember paying 60 bucks the for first a case of German beer. Well, the first case didn't care because it was a case beer. of beer. Yeah. Yeah. I remember the first time I bought <laughs> a case of beer, it was 80 bucks. Yeah. 80 bucks for a case of beer. Me and B. White and a couple other people, we ended up drinking three cases of beer, man. Yeah. We spent 240 bucks. Yeah. It didn't matter. It didn't, who yeah. cares? Somebody bought a satellite that was like a Middle Eastern satellite. And you could go on the website and you could look at their uh, channel programming. And I saw it said American College Football. It's on the same day as the Backyard Brawl, which was uh, played in Morgantown that year. And uh, 
I'm like, hey, let's take a chance. Well, being an eight hour time difference, we had to get up at 3.30 in the morning to watch the game. You know, it was November and it was freezing over there right before Thanksgiving. I took a digital picture of the guys and sent it back to the Dominion Post. You know, we're over there sitting at 3.30 in the morning watching this game and no one slept that night because uh, next morning had to get up, run missions, take care of equipment, stuff like that. We initially were told, you know, from the get-go, before we ever went into Kuwait, or before we ever left Kuwait, you guys go, you build your bridge, you do your mission, we're going to send you home. You guys are reservists, we're going to send you home. We go and do that, so we're waiting, okay, well, we're ready to go home. You know, we're down at Baghdad, we've lived down by the, 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 the river, maintained the bridge for a couple months, and now we're at, at, at Dogwood, and okay, we're ready to go home. Um, so that later gets changed to, you know, we're going to be sending you home in a couple months. And to the point where we had packed our connexes, done packing list, ready to ready to go home, ready to put our stuff on the to get the word, put your stuff on the on the vehicles. We're we're heading back to Kuwait. Um, and then it came up to you know within days of that, ready to move out. Sorry, you're not going to be going home. You'd rather not hurt anything, because that that just made it worse. Uh, when that six months was up, all of a sudden they're supposed to be home, they're not. Yeah. So then it was just. Okay, you're you're so high of a peak of uh, interest. You, you know she's coming home. Great, gotta get everything ready. Uh, and then all of a sudden she's not. One uh, officer made the statement to our families that we'd be home by Thanksgiving, and that didn't happen, and that really upset a lot of people. Basically, we had to have several formations, just to, even when we didn't have news, to, to squash the rumors. People were talking this, talking that, calling home, saying this was on the news, I heard this at the mall. So we'd have to call formations to say, listen, we don't know. At that point, it was just like, okay, when the heck are they going to let them come home? This is getting ridiculous. I mean, nine months turned into a year. I mean, we're just, four months turned into a year. How does that happen? Yeah, because no one would ever give us a, a definite word, and that was so upsetting. I mean, here it is at Christmas, and I think we left the country like the 15th or 16th of February, but here it is Christmas, January, and we still hadn't had a definite word on when we're leaving. It wasn't much like Christmas. You know, I bought mine a, a bunch of gifts, but you know, he's little. As long as he's getting toys, he really don't care if it's, you know, what's going on. So uh, it wasn't a whole lot to celebrate, but uh, you did the best for him, and, and go from there. It was right after Christmas, and about, we were all anticipating it because their, their 12 months would be up officially from the time they left would be in Ju January. And he called me about February and he goes, you know, prepare for us coming home soon. You know, I'll be home soon. And uh, we were very, very excited about it. You know, it was like, oh, thank God it's finally over. State in the Union, West, by God, Virginia. 500 meters we made. Yeah. Here we are, guys. Yeah. West Virginia, Blue Mountain, Shenandoah River. Life is over. Preston County. Older than the sea. Me and my people love you. Younger than the mountain. Yeah!